Welcome back to the In Goal Magazine gear review session. This is the fun part of running In Goal Magazine. It's like Christmas morning when this stuff shows up, especially when we're talking about the new Pete Smith Warrior Ritual line. Uh, this stuff is new for 2012, completely redesigned pad. Uh, Pete Smith coming on board, obviously used to run his own company, Smith Hockey. Now he's working with Warrior. And uh, let's just say that the results, both from what we've seen and tried and testing done with a wide range of goaltenders from midget AAA to junior B, ex-pro old men to beer leaguers, it's all positive. It looks like uh, Warrior's got a really positive product on its hands for 2012. And let's start by going over the leg pad. This is the Pro Custom leg pad. The first thing that jumps out at you when you look at this pad is uh, I said it was a work of art. The, uh, the stitching, the seaming and everything is absolutely um, fantastic and it's not just a question of great looks but it's great function. This binding list design that Pete's uh, put in here on the bottom of the pad uh, has a fantastic look to it but it's also got function to it so that when you're going down into the butterfly there's nothing holding you up. You can transition from standing to down uh, as fast as anything as a result of this bindingless smooth surface on the pad here. Sticking with the toe, we want to stick with the toe here, turn it right over and here's where some of the unique features are for this pad. This is the sliding toe bridge and this is something that fans of Pete Smith are going to be familiar with, they've seen it in his old products. The idea here is simple. We all know, we've all seen NHL goaltenders, we've all done it ourselves, we tie a bunch of knots in the toe and by tying a bunch of nuts in the toe, the idea here is to allow the skate and the skate cowling to slide down so that it can be closer to the ice. Obviously, the easier it is, the less resistance there is to get the skate to the ice and the cowling to the ice, the less tension there is on the ankle, the less tension there is on the knee, the less tension there is on the hips. Those are all things you want less tension of, not more. By having a sliding toe bridge, that eases the transition to the ice while allowing you to feel like the toe is tied tighter to, to the skate. So in other words, the feeling that you're connected to the pad remains, but the resistance to getting to the ice is minimized. The other part of this that you'll see that's different is what Pete told, called a, a tabletop design. This is flat. There is no really bold defined boot channel in here. Uh, again, the idea that the skate can move freely across the pad and down to the ice when you transition into the butterfly, that's the way it's designed, that's the feature of it. Uh, there is no channel that the boot can get caught up in, it just transitions nicely. Another feature of this, you can see the buckles here. On both sides, the strapping options on this lower part of the pad, three different places that you can place the pad for three different strapping options. And with those three different strapping options, you can adjust how it fits on the boot, the way the pad, whether it's pulled back up on the boot or whether it sits more forward on the boot. The other thing I noticed was the strap positioning uh, actually changes. It's not just how it positions forward and backward on your boot, but actually um, the height on the leg as a, as a result as well. So when we move the strap back here to this higher position, it tensioned the pad right down to the bottom of the, uh, of, of the, the leg as well. Moving up into the leg channel of the pad. As you all know, depending on what brand you wear, you, you have different preferences for how the leg pad fits. You, some people like a tight pad, some people like a loose pad, a wide open leg channel. When we talked to Warrior, they said that they believed this pad was for everyone. And I gotta be honest, I was skeptical when I heard it. But we have tried this with people that are coming from Vaughn where that, that leg pad around the calf is done up really tight to people who are coming from Reebok where it's a wide open leg channel. And I was surprised that they all were able to get this pad in, dialed in a way that they all liked it. I'm pleasantly surprised. When somebody tells you they built the pad for everyone, you're naturally gonna, your eyebrows go up a little bit. But I believe they've pulled it off. And here's how they did it. It's through the leg channel. It's inset a little bit. You have the ability to make this a tight leg channel. You can tighten it up as much as you want so it maintains a nice tight leg channel. But again, even if you have it tight and you like it wrapped around the calf, the way they've, they've put brakes, Pete has put brakes and seams in here. So these brakes allow this calf wrap down around the ankle, again, a nice natural open position. So you can have that tight feeling like you're locked in the pad here. It feels nice and firm, your legs locked in the channel, but when you transition down to the ice and that skate moves down to the ice, the resistance is minimized. Because of these brakes, they fold open naturally and the resistance is minimized. There's not a lot of tension there. The skate gets to the ice easier and as we said before, that's a positive. Now, you're not a Vaughn guy, you don't like that tight fit, 
simply either you can loosen it up or you can remove it completely. And this leg channel opens right up for you. You just take your outer straps and it's a two strap system. Do them up like you'd normally do. But you combine the openness of this leg channel. There's I mean, it, there's still a fair bit of openness. It's a very soft, uh, soft feeling in here with the fact that it these seams allow it to open up even more and fit more naturally on the leg. It's a really nice combination. Again, we had people coming from a Vaughn background, coming from a Reebok background, and they both quite quickly were capable of getting this pad dialed in to play how they liked it to play, and that's not something you see every day, the ability to kind of satisfy both ends of the spectrum. But I think we both found, whether it was tight, whether it was loose, this pad wanted a butterfly. It, it was almost like it had a mind of its own when you were going down to the ice. It was finding the right position right away, no matter how you were wearing it. Now let's turn it over and let's take a look at the knee stack. Now, strapping, strapping options. You've got a couple of, uh, you've got plastic quick, quick release buckles here um, on the top. These are all customizable. You can choose to have different strapping options if you'd like to have more of the leather straps, if you'd like to have more uh, plastic straps on the lower. Those are all completely customizable, as are the positions. These are easy, quick adjust straps. You just pop them off and you can take them out and move them up and strap them up higher, strap them up lower. So depending on how you like to wear the pad, this is, I don't want to say standard because there still are some companies that don't offer you this range, but more and more we're seeing companies do this where they offer the option to kind of move these straps around. So but what we're not seeing, where, where the true innovation here in the, around the knee area is to me, is in the knee stack, and it comes in two places. The first thing we look, notice is in the landing area. What they've done here with the strapping system the original, the, the first section of the landing gear can't come out as far. The second section sticks out further. That's where you provide your stability. The problem in the past was there used to be a little gap here where this line would come straight across and you'd have a little gap. What they've done is they put a stabilizer, and I don't know if you can see that properly, but there's a little notch here. It's a stabilizer so that when you drop, these two pieces fit naturally together and this stabilizer bar really provides a nice stable flat surface across it. Okay, now the other thing that they've changed in the knee cradle, you can strap it up here, you can strap it up low and, and, and alongside, but however you do it, he's created a knee landing area where there's a lot of twists and maybe I can get you Hutch to give that a, grab that and pull it and give it a twist. Again, breaks and seams inside the knee landing area rotate naturally with the knee, so it'll rotate quite easily and open quite easily, so again, there's less resistance in there. So when you have your knee pads and your, your giant knee pads, it's not going to cause the pad to push over on its side. It's not going to cause an over-rotation problem. It's not going to cause you to miss the knee stack. This is one of the more unique designs I've seen. Uh, it's the first time I've seen somebody put brakes and seams inside a knee stack. It's quite innovative by Pete Smith, and I think it's going to be a function that anyone who likes to wear an oversized knee pad is going to really enjoy. You're, you can wear that pad without having to worry about changing the way the pad performs around that knee. It doesn't cause any interference. It doesn't cause any poor rotation. It allows you to move naturally. And, and again, the pad slides well, it rotates well, everything works properly when you have that, no matter how big or small the knee pad is, when you have this seam up there. Absolutely, but for what it's worth, uh, I wore them without knee pads and with knee pads, and, and you still notice that ease of transition into the butterfly as a result of the seaming, how open this is, and the thin face as well on the side of the pad, Kevin. Okay, next piece of equipment that's unique to these pads, on the outer outside of the calf, there's an outer wedge. Now, the idea here is when you go up against the post, you don't want to have to go straight up with your leg. Your, your, your natural inclination, if you want to have a skate edge to push off of, is to lean that knee forward and have a little bend in that knee. And the idea here is you can bend that knee forward and still have a straight line on this edge up against the post. I'm going to be perfectly honest. When they teased this to us, we kind of thought it was a bit of a, you know, it's one of those things that you think might be a gimmick. And again, not just us, junior B kid, tries it out for the first time, can't believe how much more comfortable he is with the seal compared to the product he was wearing in the past, not going to name names, but he liked the way that went up against the post. He felt like it protected the post better without forcing him to go straight-legged and lose the ability to launch off that. You combine all these factors, and, and whether you've got it done up tight or got it done up loose, it rotates properly. It slides well. That's the other common denominator factor we heard from all the goalies that tested it said this pad slid exceptionally well. Absolutely. Your lateral mobility is incredible in this pad when you're down on the ice. 
Uh, if a guy my age can be noticed by his teammates to have increased lateral mobility just with the first night out in the pads, it tells you something about it. I think the other thing is that the two comments that we, that we heard most when we tested it independently with, with a variety of goaltenders were, one, how well it slid, and we've talked about all the functions that lead to that, but two, how light it was when they picked it up. And that was not just a function of it being a light pad, but a function of how balanced it was when they, when they pick it up and when they put it on. It was. I think you have to be prepared when you first try them, and, and we encourage people. We're giving you some observations, but we're encouraging people to get into the store, get some demo sets out there, and see how they fit your game. I mean, it's a flat face pad, but I believe it's one of the softer. You, you can customize your brakes in terms of how soft you want it to be, but I believe just overall the surface and the feel of it uh, for a flat face pad is one of the softest flat face pads I've felt.